friends, this is Sarah May for Help Me Be Me. And this is a little episode about when you feel stuck and like the universe is just not listening. And maybe it's when you're in a job you don't like or you're just at a point in your life when you just don't feel like you have any direction and nothing seems to be going your way and you're just not making any progress despite any kind of effort or energy that you're sending out to the world. And I know that is one of the most painful places to be because you become so desperate. It's like when you're, you've been unhappy for a really, really long time and then you end up just getting uh, overwhelmed by how trapped you feel. So it's almost like it just builds on top of itself. Um, So I want to give you a couple of couple of my tools um, and a couple of other people's tools to help you manage this state. Um, But firstly, you must know that your actions, like any actions that you're taking in this state, are likely not as effective as they could be because they're being motivated by pain. And as soon as you're doing things as a result of just feeling like I want to get the hell out of somewhere, it's It's going to be pushing you in kind of all different directions. And to be the most effective, you should be taking actions toward what you really want. And so I think for a lot of people to get stuck in a place like this, it's when you don't really know what it is you want to do. And so if you feel like you don't have a clear path, you'll tend to kind of head in a general direction. But half of the time you're taking a step forward and then half stepping, half, half stepping back. So I know that time and energy is a huge factor when it comes to being stuck because it's taking up all of your time just to cope and it's taking up all of your effort just to cope. Um, but here is what I'd like to offer you as a place to start. And the topic is focus. You control your focus and you control your energy. And those are the most valuable things you have. As a rule, do not waste them on anything that does not deserve them. And that means negativity and worry. So anything that you don't want in your life Do not waste your energy or your focus on those things. So if it helps, visualize your energy like it's money. And when you give it to things that do not deserve it, like negativity and worry, you're literally burning it. Imagine it. Just picture it that way. Every time I worry, I am burning money. And it seems like when you're in the moment and you're feeling really just overwhelmed and defeated and depressed or the day has just taken it out of you, you actually have the power to decide to shift your focus and your thoughts to what you want and what you do have in your life. It just takes a conscious effort. Because it, at the end of the day, it's all in your power to change. It just means you have to attack it in a very structured way. because. It can be, uh, half of the problem can be just getting distracted by all of these problems. So it's, it's making you incapable of making concrete progress. I mean, it's completely understandable. I don't, I'm not trying to diminish any of what that feels like because it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, if, of course, I completely sympathize with this state of being. It's tough. I know you can feel panicked when you don't know what to do because when you're stuck in a life that you don't love, it's, you become desperate and you're trying to move in any direction. So I would like to offer, in addition to making your energy and focus of the greatest value in your life, figure out what it is that lights you up. Something in your life that you're good at, something that you love to do, try and think about for the next, say, month, every day. Just reflect on 
times in your life that you felt awesome and fully alive creatively or rewarded as a person? And just start to write down that list. It can be anything, even something that feels trivial. So if it's, uh, I, I went to a restaurant and I loved um, learning about the ingredients of a wine. Or if there was a time you went to a fancy party or an event or a fundraiser and, and that really just thrilled you to be around people that were so important. Just try and write down all of the experiences and quantify exactly why it stood out and what about that experience was rewarding. Because one thing that w- happens when you are stuck in a place you don't want to be and you're not heading in any concrete direction, it's usually a result of not being clear on what you want or not doing enough that rewards your soul. Because if you're suffering and in a place you don't really want to be, if you're able to split your time and dedicate a part of it to things that you really, really care about, it almost balances it out a bit and it helps you at least invest uh, part of yourself where it needs to go. And when you're not doing any of that, you just feel empty and defeated. So start that list, record it throughout the month, and know that. You are a very, very layered person, and even though you might have grown up with a a certain opinion about what you're good at and what you're supposed to do, that changes as you grow new layers. So don't be surprised or or undo any of the things that are going to go on that list. Um, The next thing I would like to um, offer as a tool to make progress in your situation is trimming the fat of your attention. So trim it down to the bare minimum of what you need to dedicate focus to, of all of the things that don't deserve your focus that you don't want to deal with, like all the menial tasks that kind of drag you down. Trim down anything you have to do to the bare minimum, including your mental attention. So if you have to worry about, or if you think you worry about something a lot, even after you've left, or if there are certain things that you don't really have to engage with other people, maybe like there are a bunch of kind of unnecessary meetings that you have to go, have to, go to, or say it's a, a personal issue, like cut out any conversations, any contact, any engagement that is not necessary because you are still burning money when you do that and you want to collect all of the time and mental energy and focus that you have to give to things you care about. And you'll be figuring out what those things are as you go. But just as a rule, it's the most valuable thing you have. Don't give your energy and focus to anything that it, that doesn't deserve it. Um, the next thing I would tell you to do is choose to rise above things that do not reflect who you aspire to be. So for example, if you have friends that uh, talk a lot of smack about people and you're like, you're trying to not be that kind of person, don't engage. Or if you're the type of person that gets really uh, frustrated at other drivers on the highway on the way home, choose to rise above that because you are the type of person that doesn't get affected by things like that. Act in every single situation as the person you aspire to become. So if someone was rude to you, who cares? It's not you to be affected by that. You're occupied by more important things. If you're struggling with yourself right now and just whether or not you can believe that it's possible for you to invest in something new in your life, like a new career or a new start or take on a new project or learn something totally new, I would ask you to look at yourself honestly because that feeling is coming from likely an emotional state that is totally compromised. Like you're you're probably in general somewhat depressed just because It can take it out of you when you're in environments that do not support growth. 
I mean, that's an achievement in itself to just get through a, a work day or a, a crowd or a family or whatever it is of people that are not supporting you and fostering in you what you want. And that takes a lot of just endurance. The other thing I would ask you to look at is when you feel like already filled with doubt and you're already feeling discouraged about trying something, it might be because of low self-worth or confidence. I mean, confidence is something that everybody has to work on for their entire lives because it's a, a con- it requires constant maintenance. Your confidence can be shattered in a heartbeat, and it doesn't mean that you're lesser or anything like that. It just means if you're already telling yourself you can't do something, that, that's negative self-talk, and it needs to stop. That's untrue, and it's defeatist, and it's coming from a place that needs to be gutted because there's no room for that in your life or anyone's life. It's illogical. You can do anything you decide to do, and you just have to decide it. I know I say that all the time, but it's true. You just decide what it is you want to do, and then you can figure out the process by which to do it. And so the first step is still, what is that thing that lights you up? And I say that lights you up because it should be something that rewards you. It it should be something that it doesn't feel like work. It's exciting. It's engaging. It doesn't mean it has to be something you've known you wanted to do since you were a baby. It just means it should make you happy. And then it will not feel like work. I'm going to give you a couple specific exercises that I think will help on just alleviating the pain of day-to-day drudgery. And these can be done on uh, in any kind of environment. So this one is from HeartMath, um, and it's basically to refocus your energy of your body, I guess the electric waves of, the electric frequency of your body. And when you're upset, you're actually, if you're angry for five minutes, you um, compromise your immune system for six hours. So imagine what you're doing when you're upset. You're compromising your ability to be productive immensely. So this is a way to just kind of refocus on your heart. Um, So imagine white light is just filling the inside of your chest and sit somewhere where you can be quiet sit quietly and in private, close your eyes and just breathe in and out deeply and focus on the area around your heart. And as you're doing this, picture something that brings you happiness, some moment that actually you can relive and feel and bask in and try to do this for two minutes and just breathe in and out very, very slowly and picture your heart filling with bright white light. When you do that, you're actually reprogramming your body to feel more happy and calm. It's kind of like a manual reset button. Um, Another one, another tool that I just tried using, and this is from a woman named Anna Neff. She's an author. I love this one. It actually worked really well for me. So it's you, whenever you're in that negative place where you're starting to defeat yourself from doing something or getting overwhelmed by all of the terrible things that you, the reasons you can't, you're screwed. Um, Give that voice of negativity a name and a face and visualize what that thing is. So if it's like a character um, or a like a specific voice, if it's a version of you, then give it a weird caricature kind of version of you face. Like I think of mine as Gollum from the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, Cause it is, it's kind of like a CD, like, um, yeah, you can't, you shouldn't really realistically, we shouldn't really even try this. It's a terrible idea. And it always comes in that form of sort of almost believable as me. So the next time you're in that state and you're starting to talk badly about your life and yourself and your surroundings, 
take that voice and give it a tone and give it a character and then tell it basically to leave you alone. I get really aggressive with mine. <laughs> I say like, get the hell out of my face. Um, but you could say stuff like, go hang out. Anna's was, go hang out at a bar for today. I don't need you. Like, go take some tequila shots. Another one that I like to use um, is just, it helps to break up the day. So you kind of set up at the beginning of the day little mini getaways and you set alarms. And it's basically like a 15 minute or five minute break that you commit to taking for yourself. And this is going to be time that you're going to spend outside of this bubble that is where you have to be. And you're going to do something positive for yourself where you can kind of reset yourself and refresh your spirit. And it's a way to remind yourself of where you are, what your goals are, and where you're headed. So whether it's taking a walk with a podcast or if you're sitting in a nice spot in the sun and just writing to yourself. It's anything to reorient yourself to your truth minus all of this additional noise and disruption. So remember to set an alarm. A good way to think about yourself as a person, as a living, breathing, evolving human, is there's a flame that lives inside of you. And when that flame is extinguished or it's about to go out, it makes you suffer. You have to feed it somehow. Wherever it is, you have to let the flame live. Whatever it's coming from, maybe it's coming from a hobby you have outside of work. Maybe it's coming from something totally unrelated to work. But whatever it is in your life, know that that flame is what you're focused on. And whether you're supporting the flame with your day job or you're allowing the flame to be what you do every day, you just have to know that when you get stuck and you feel depressed, something in you needs more fuel. Your loves and your creative self need to be fulfilled. And in closing, I would like to remind you just, I know it's really hard right now and I know it's frustrating and it feels hopeless and it's easy to get overwhelmed because you're, you're facing a lot and you're already conquering a lot. But at the end of your life, none of this will matter. It all means nothing. All of the paperwork and the worry and the numbers and the stuff, it's It'll all evaporate, and the only thing you will remember is your loved ones and what you overcame in your life, what you ventured to do, and how you progressed. You'll think about what you loved, and that's what you need to focus on now. Go easy on yourself and allow yourself to be happy today, right now, with exactly where you are in your process. Because whether you can see it or not, that is something wonderful. It's just really hard when your vision is a little bit blurred. So I send you my love and vibes of positivity. And don't forget to smile. Smile.